In early 2374, Benjamin Sisko would slam a data pad on his desk that had been given to him by Dr. Bashir and state that the Federation would never surrender to the Dominion. Surrender would never happen on Sisko's watch. When pushed further by Bashir, who wanted to save lives, Captain Sisko said, if we are to lose, let's go down fighting so that our descendants will know what we are made of. You know, it's interesting to see how appalled and self-righteous Captain Sisko is to Julian Bashir here. He could not fathom surrendering, even to save lives. And then, not long after, in mid-2375, on stardate 51721.3, he would begin to lament about what he had done. And he had done it in an attempt to save lives. Every Friday, Captain Benjamin Sisko of Deep Space Nine would post a listing of Starfleet personnel killed, wounded, or missing. Those very lives he could have saved with Bashir, if he had only listened. The Friday posting wasn't only a grim reminder of the losses being incurred, but that actual people who the crew of Deep Space Nine cared about were dying. Again, it's interesting to look at the man from In a Pale Moonlight and the man from Statistical Probabilities. I'm not saying that Ben is inconsistent here, but the changes of the war that have happened to him. The death count hadn't taken as bad a toll on him yet in statistical probabilities than it would in a pale moonlight. With the death count getting ever closer to that 900 billion mark, Sisko would resolve that something had to give, that the Federation no longer had any chance to win this war if it continued. In order for any kind of victory that wasn't a surrender, the Romulans would need to enter the war, willingly or otherwise. After he resolved to do something about it, Sisko would employ the services of Elam Garrick, he would contact Mr. Garrick so that Mr. Garrick could use his own resources to find evidence that the Dominion were planning to invade the Romulan Star Empire. Here's an intriguing thought. Sisko assumes that the Dominion were planning to invade the Romulan Star Empire. While I'll admit it does seem probable, there's a chance that this wouldn't have happened, at least immediately, and not for a very long, long time. After a bloody conflict with the other Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers, the Dominion might be very apt just to let the Romulans be, at least for the time being. I've also seen very convincing arguments that the Romulans never really intended to let the Dominion win, that they were content to sit back and let their enemies pummel each other until a decent amount of damage on both sides had been done and then enter the war. This honestly seems most likely. The Romulans were always big on manipulation and letting two sides absolutely tear each other apart before becoming the saviors. We'll honestly never know though, as Garrick agrees to Sisko's bidding in this messy business. The great thing about this episode, to me at least, is that Sisko comments about the road to hell being paved one brick at a time. You can really see that here. When he first starts with Garrick, it's an espionage mission. It's risky for sure, but nothing that wouldn't be out of the ordinary for the war. But every time he interacts with Garrick, there's a movement, albeit a small one, but a slight shift in what needs to be done. And while Sisko would never immediately go from wanting to bring the Romulans into the war by having a man killed, he does get there all the same. This is just a slow fade. Back to the episode, as Garrick is about his business, we learn of another devastating defeat for the Federation. The Dominion have invaded Beta Zed. I've been looking into it, and I do intend to do a breakdown of the Battle of Beta Zed, though it'll be non-canon lore, as Alpha Canon doesn't exist for it yet. But for the purposes of this breakdown, let's focus more on the psychological impacts upon Sisko. As I've said a couple of times, every Friday he would bring lists of thousands of people who were most likely dead. And now, Beta Z had been invaded. The founding member worlds of the Federation were within the grasp of the Dominion. It's never mentioned, but looking at a map, this ultimately includes the United Earth. Going back to the analogy of bricks being paved to hell, while I would say that the first brick was laid when he spoke to Garrick for the first time, certainly the mortar and building plans for the road were founded during the mission briefing on how Beta Z fell. Imagine that you started a war where tens to hundreds of thousands of people were dying, and you just got the news that a vital piece of your government had just been invaded. People were dying. They were suffering. And then imagine remembering that you could have saved all of those lives by simply listening to Bashir and surrendering. And now? You aren't even in a position to do that. After this news, Sisko returns to inquire with Garrick about their operation. He finds out that all of the operatives are now dead, which is honestly quite amazing that the Dominion would be so efficient. You can see how Sisko is still leaning towards the light here. Sisko, for all intents and purposes, got several operatives killed, and they probably had families. You can see how gray Sisko is here, how he is not the perfect evolved human, but somewhere in the middle. Sisko, for all intents and purposes, got several operatives killed, and they probably had families. 
This is answered with a sigh and an apology, and then he moves to return to his duties. Death was a normal part of his life now. It was unfortunate, but nothing he would necessarily lose sleep about, at least not when it comes to the lives lost. Before he can leave, though, Garrick suggests that instead of finding the plans that they assume would be there to invade Romulus, they just fabricate them. This would be the second stone on that road, and you can see the shift slowly in Sisko. He fights with himself in this episode. The Federation in him, the evolved human in him, knows that this is not the way of war, at least not the way the Federation does it. This isn't what you should do, but pragmatically, it's necessary. This is what you would have to do if you wanted to shield paradise. Another damning piece of this is that Sisko didn't do this in a vacuum. The highest level of Starfleet command agreed to it. Not only was Benjamin culpable, but the highest levels of Starfleet, the supposed pinnacle of evolved humans, were willing to make this happen. And then the third brick would be laid. Captain Sisko would also have to help free a man. A man named Graythan Tolar, the man would be awaiting execution in a Klingon cell for... Well, we never really know what he did. I suppose that's for the best. Sisko has him freed, and here's yet another brick that is laid. Sisko advises the man that he will be making a special holo program, that he is not working for Starfleet Command, but Sisko and Garrick. Upon hearing the name Garrick, Graythan is immediately put off, knowing there is more to this than meets the eye. He even seems visibly scared. Sisko doesn't react much here, but we know through the dialogue in his personal log that he knows he's continuing down a dark path. For the next part, I'll be honest. I find it contrived. When Graythan apparently attempts to kill Quark after a failed attempt at what seems near sexual assault, I rolled my eyes, even on the first viewing. This was just an obstacle to highlight the darkness in Sisko. The man had just went through months to years of being held up in a Klingon cell told he would die every day. To put himself in a position where he would go back to that? Seems unlikely. I think it would have been much better if perhaps instead of him doing anything, he was perhaps recognized by somebody. Maybe he killed a person's loved one and then Quark could come in noticing that this is impacting Sisko and something had to be done and could offer to make the issue go away. For a price, of course. You get the same scene between the two, which I think is wonderful, and it makes more sense. But looking at what had actually happened in the show, Sisko does indeed lay another brick. He is forced to not only bribe someone, but Quark of all people. Quark the person he always acted superior to, the person who he held himself in higher regard to his Federation background. And now, he's giving Quark a bribe, and he was showing that even humans would follow the rules of acquisition if they had to. But if this was the road he was building, was the pathway to hell, Sisko was just starting to build the driveway. He hadn't even gotten onto the road proper. Stay tuned next week when Sisko goes from definitively gray to definitively black. Death of multiple people, death of a senator, conspiracy to pull the Romulans into the war, and all that blood on his hands. We'll do a deep dive further into that on the next Lore Reloaded.